That will be Thursday's program. It is April 9th, 2020. April 9th it is. Indeed, yeah. It did occur to me today. You're looking forward to your bank holiday weekend. Most people now, of course, are furloughed or are working from home. And they've gotten used to being at home. The government is firing on all cylinders today, at least in the media anyway, warning us not to go outside over the Easter weekend. People should follow our rules and stay home over the Easter weekend. That is the message today from people like the Culture Secretary Oliver Dowden and everybody else really, opposition party MPs. Temperatures are expected to reach about 25 degrees in some parts of the country over the weekend, probably down south, down south, more than up here. But it's going to be glorious and you're to stay in and don't go outside, according to the government. According to the government. Some police forces are warning that there will be a crackdown on those found to be flouting the rules. Dominic Rabb is acting on behalf of Boris Johnson. He has chaired a virtual meeting of the government's emergency COBRA committee today. They will be briefing, Rabb will be amongst probably two or three people briefing the nation round about now and they are expected to say that they will keep the lockdown until next week and next week they will probably announce the lockdown will go on for possibly another three weeks. How much can people take? That's a very good question. The Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon said that it was likely the lockdown was going to be in place for some weeks to come yet. And in an exclusive for the Richie Allen radio show, I spoke to Nicola Sturgeon earlier and asked her was it difficult to take the decision to tell the Scottish to stay in over the hot bank holiday weekend. Was it, Nicola? It was Fandabidozi, 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 and they danced all night. It was Fandabidozi making that decision. Stay indoors, don't go outside. Thought so, thought so, thought so. So as I said, in the next few minutes, might have happened already, Dominic Rabb, Foreign Secretary, will he probably announce the lockdown continues until next week. And next week, they will call for another three weeks. Greater Manchester Police announced today they've broken up nearly 700 illegal parties. Yeah, planet dystopia. Northamptonshire Police are talking tough. Their Chief Constable, Nick Adderley, is speaking here to Sky's Adam Bolton. Tough talk from the police. Well, we've uh, we've stepped things up here because we've given the public uh, three weeks to get used to this. This is a massive change in terms of their lifestyle and how they can operate. We've worked on the basis of engagements and information. Uh, and from today, I'm being really clear that if people continue to flout the law, uh, that they will be fined. Uh, and if appropriate, they will be uh, arrested. But I do want to make the point that the vast, vast majority here in Northamptonshire, and I hear from colleagues across the country, are abiding by the law and to those people I say thank you it is just a minority that we now need to hone in on. Do you actually have the powers to arrest people if uh, uh, they disobey you? Well, not under the coronavirus bill. The coronavirus bill is fairly clear in terms of the fines. Uh, but what we do have, of course, is the wide-ranging powers that police officers have and carry in any case. So where people break the law in terms of antisocial behaviour or in public order uh, and linked to coronavirus, then actually they will get arrested for that offence and they will be charged with that offence and a coronavirus or a COVID bill offence too. So there, and Adam Bolton wants to delve into specific cases. Right, so you can define things like... Like, uh, you know, refusing to stop sunbathing or... <laughs> I love that, you know, because we really are in vaudeville. This really is Orwellian territory. Refusing to stop sunbathing. Get him! What's he doing? Sunbathing! Right, so you can define things like, uh, you know, refusing to stop sunbathing or uh, <laughs> gathering in big groups. You can actually define that as antisocial behaviour. And if they refuse to stop doing it, you, can, you, you believe your officers can arrest them. Don't know how Bolton didn't laugh when he asked that question. Yes, it's an option, and what I'm saying is... It's an option. Saying is that ...we've got to get really serious with this. People are dying every day. We're experiencing this here in the county and wider across... But they're not dying because others are sunbathing. You can't make any case for that. ...country. We're seeing doctors, we're seeing consultants and nurses dying as they're sacrificing their lives to protect... <coughs> Bullshit. ...protect us. It is only right that we ask the public to play their part, and in the main they are, but it's that hardcore of individuals... Hardcore, hardcore nutters who go outside. 
<laughs> he's hardcore him. Smithy across the road, he's hardcore. Why, what did he do? He went out four times today. He's hard. Hard as nails. That if they refuse, yes, they could be issued with that ticket. If they continue to refuse to move on or to go home as being requested, there are other powers which could mean that those individuals will be arrested. And actually, those people will then end up with a criminal record, which is just not worth it. The more important point is, by going home and following the law, you are saving lives and protecting our valuable NHS. Yes, stay home and protect the NHS. Sky Home Affairs correspondent Mark White explains... What the Chief Constable, whom you just heard, meant. Listen up. This is a um, pretty good summary by Mark White. But what the Chief Constable was saying is that, look, they can interpret other laws that they have, other powers uh, around the likes of public order uh, and antisocial behaviour. That would give them the authority, they believe, to move to arrest a persistent offender who just simply wasn't willing to move on. But they don't expect to do that in many cases. The vast majority of people are going, some are being fined. Uh, but it's not, as I say, really the situation now or in the last couple of weeks. It's Listen to what he says here. It says, we go forward. We go forward. And we're looking at this lockdown, not in terms of weeks, but in terms of months. Yeah. And just how willing will people be to observe the law and stay in their houses for months at a time? Months. Months at a time. You could be locked up for months at a time and how will people react? Will they do what they're told? Prisons will be funny places in the future, won't they? What are you in for there, pal? Playing five-a-side with me mates in the park. <laughs> Using jumpers for goalposts. Yeah, I should have known better, really. The virus terror chart was amber. And there's a head cold going around. It's my own fault, really. What did you get? Ten years. <laughs> You're lucky you didn't get life, you bally gammon bastard. Oh, be Jesus. Twelve and a half minutes past the hour. This is the BBG, not the BBC, Richie Allen. Europe's most listened to. Independent, big baldy gammon. This will make you giggle. It's Adam Bolton again, our friend Adam Bolton. Oh, I just, when I, when I was listening to this this morning, I couldn't wait to share it with you. Listen up. This is, well, what did my old pal call things at one time? It was very good. It stuck with me for a long time. An inversion. Listen to the inversion. Here's Adam Bolton, the rotund, pasty-faced presenter of Sky News mid-morning programme. Adam. A number of conspiracy theories are circulating online about uh, the coronavirus, uh, ways to cure it, and even why uh, we've been clapping for our carers at 8 o'clock on Thursday evening. Some of those fake stories surround the building of the UK's 5G network, which claims it's linked uh, to the cause of the virus leading to arson attacks on phone masks. Well, let's speak to Kwasin Kassam. He's professor of philosophy at the University of Warwick. and Philosophy now. He's a professor of philosophy. Kwasin Kassam. And an author of conspiracy theories. Uh, thank you very much. He's the author of conspiracy theories. Thank you for joining us, professor. <laughs> um, first of all, what, what are the uh, most worrying fake news and conspiracy theories that you're hearing out there about coronavirus? Yes, what are the most worrying theories? Kwasim, Kassam. Well, the most uh, simple one is, is just the theory that the COVID-19 pandemic uh, has been caused by uh, in the installation of 5G technologies uh, starting off in, uh, in China. Uh, and then some theories say that um, that this is all being done intentionally to cause the pandemic and others say that it wasn't intentional to begin with, but there's a conspiracy to cover it up. So there's a whole variety of different theories out there. And, and why, why do these th things break out uh, at, at times like this when people are focused on an issue? Um, I, I think you often have uh, an upsurge in conspiracy theories at times of crisis and uncertainty. Uh, I mean, clearly we're, we're going through a very difficult period at the moment and, and people naturally look for explanations. Um, and, and so one, that's one source of uh, belief in conspiracy theories. Uh, I think it's also true that these conspiracy theories about new technologies have been around for a long time. I mean, you had conspiracy theories about uh, electricity pylons. Electricity pylons. Uh, Anti-vaxxer theories, conspiracy... Anti-vaxxer theory, anti-vaccine theories. Conspiracy theories about uh, GM crops and, and so on. GM crops and so on. Wow. Wow. <laughs> 
What kind of fuckery are you? Right. So to prove that conspiracy theorists are nutters, he mentions electricity pylons, GM foods and vaccines. But you see, electromagnetic hypersensitivity is a real thing. It's real. It has been proven to be real. And um, some vaccines have and do cause harm. Some payouts have been made by Merck and GlaxoSmithKline and others in the past. Right. And GM crops. Are you feckin' shitting me, Kwasim Kassam? Monsanto, who makes GM crops, gave the world Roundup and gave the world cancer. Yes. And mice that were fed GM's modified food got cancer themselves, the poor mice. This guy's a bit of an idiot, isn't he? Of course, if Adam Bolton did his job and said what I just said right there, Adam would be fired. No P45. Let's hear more from Khwasim Kassam, the philosophy professor. <laughs> We've witnessed a kind of general um, rise in suspicion about uh, governments and about experts and about so-called elites. Uh, and one of the problems with uh, having, having experts uh, come on programs and say, you know, there's nothing in this theory, is that conspiracy theorists will say, oh, well, they would say that, wouldn't they? Mm. Suspicion? of experts, politicians, and the media. I wonder why. Children, let's welcome to the programme the ghost of Christmas past. I am quite sure, I think most people are, that he has these weapons and that the people in the documentation exist to show that. And the truth is, this issue of weapons of mass destruction <laughs> is a real threat to the world. I believe, incidentally, that it is only a matter of time before it is linked with international terrorism. Those crazy conspiracy theorists, guys, eh? What else from Kwasim Kassam? Conspiracy theorists are very fond of, 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 of asking, you know, the question, you know, uh, uh, who, who benefits? Um, what's in it for them? And, and you might ask the same question about conspiracy theories and conspiracy theorists. And actually, it, it's, it's interesting that uh, some of these uh, theories about 5G have been circulated by, you know, for example, media channels that are uh, connected to, to the Kremlin. So that would be one thing to, to, to look at. The Kremlin has got nothing to do with conspiracy theorists. Nothing. What was the first part of that bollocks again? Conspiracy theorists are very fond of, 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 of asking, you know, the question, you know, uh, uh, who, who benefits? So we are fond of asking the question, who benefits? What kind of fuckery is this? Yes, Kwasim, we ask who benefits because the rather rotund, pasty-faced, bunter-looking fucking useless presenter you are speaking to never asks those questions. You see, Kwasim, he's supposed to ask who benefits. It's his job. You daft. Let's give the last word to Adam Bolton. You couldn't make this stuff up, be Jesus. Adam Bolton. Professor, thank you very much indeed. Use your common sense. Uh, <laughs> probably helps. Uh, uh, sense, exactly. Yeah, use uh, your common sense. The, uh, Easter weekend <laughs> is normally a time of improved prospects for businesses. Use your common sense, says Bolton, and then says the Easter weekend is normally a weekend of improved prospects for businesses, but businesses are fucked. Yes, we live in a madhouse. It is an inversion. My old chum used to say. It's insane. Laughing at conspiracy theorists and using the examples of GM foods, vaccines and, and high-tension electricity cables. <laughs> oh, God. Let's have one more example, shall we? Of why the public doesn't trust the media, politicians or so-called experts. Dozens and dozens of people were killed on the 7th of July 2005. In London when bombs went off, at train stations and on a bus. Loads and loads of people were killed. Some lads, some Muslim lads were blamed for it, including Mohammed Sadiq A. Khan. They were blamed for it. The bastards, the terrorist bastards, so they were. They, the terrorists killed all these people in London, July 7, 2005. I haven't played this clip for about three years. On the very evening of the 7th of July, 2005, the future Mrs. Allen and myself 
were sitting in our Manchester home, not far from, from Rush home, and we were watching the late evening news. And would you believe it? Would you believe it? A consultant called Peter Power, who worked for a company called Visor Consultants, he went on the television and he said this. Uh, today we were running an exercise for a company, bearing in mind I'm now in the private sector, and we sat everybody down in the city, a thousand people involved in the whole organisation, but the crisis team, and the most peculiar thing was we based our scenario on the simultaneous attacks on the underground and mainline station. So we had to suddenly <laughs> switch an exercise from fictional to real. And one of the first things is, get that bureau number, when you have a list of people missing, tell them. And so it took a long to, time. Just to get this right, you yeah. are actually working today on an exercise that envisioned yes. virtually this scenario. Yeah. Uh, almost precisely. I was up until 2 o'clock this morning because it, it's our job, my own company, Visor Consultants. We yes, Mr. News Presenter, would you believe it? These train stations that were attacked today and the bus and all the rest of it, would you believe it? We were on the day, today, 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 we were doing a drill pretending that the exact same scenario was happening in the exact same train stations. Would you believe it? Yeah. Mohammed Sadiq Khan and his alleged two or three accomplices, of course, never blew up the train stations in London. The intelligence agencies of this country and other countries did and blamed those poor four, ba uh, poor four bastards who will forever be linked to that event on that day. These are the reasons why people ask questions like who benefits. These are the reasons, I would say to Kwasim Kassam, why people don't trust their media or their government. It's a crazy crazy world we live in when ordinary right-minded free-thinking intelligent people say hang on a second but that doesn't make sense and you are labeled a tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist ah sure it's a bit mad i tell you it's a bit mad i am richie allen by the way how you doing i love being with you i love you thanks for listening to this program when i say that i mean it. i really do love you this is morrissey an interesting drug. Yeah, he's a cantankerous, curmudgeonly old bastard, but he's Morrissey and he's our Morrissey on the Richie Allen radio show, wrote the worst autobiography of all times. Published by Penguin, wasn't it? Yes, I remember buying it. Not really excited about it. Wasn't expecting it to be great. Nobody has ever worshipped himself, I don't think, more than Moz. But by God, was it crap. Anyway, but I love him anyway, we will be speaking with Dr. Chris Busby in a few minutes' time. Welcome to the Richie Allen Radio Show for Thursday, the 9th of April 2020. Do keep those tweets coming in. Good evening to you. Good evening. Good evening to the left hand of God. How are you doing? Good evening to Gail, to Mawinga, to Charlotte and Burnley. Hi to Patricia. How are you doing, Patricia? Hi to Susan, to Patrick, to Liz, to Steve. Lots of tweets coming in to David. Yes. Hi to Scottish John in Texas. <laughs> I promised John I wouldn't make fun of Nicola Sturgeon using the crankies ever again. But the problem is, John, my fingers were crossed when I was saying it. I didn't believe myself that I wouldn't do it. That's the thing. Hi to Laurie Hatfield. How you doing, Laurie? Uh, the Richie Allen Twitter handle is at Richie Allen Show. Hi to Diane. How you doing, Diane? To Jack Lake, to John Connor. Uh, to everybody new. Got, getting a lot of new... We're getting a lot of contacts through the website from new listeners, people who've only just recently discovered the programme. That's a lovely thing, really is. So do let us know if you're new. Let us know, drop us a line and say, hey, big baldy gammon, which are, which are, which are Irish accent. We have recently found your radio programme, do tell me. It's not to massage my ego, far from it. It's just nice. It's nice to know that people are picking up the programme. All the time. That's good. I really do appreciate that. Hi to uh, Sean. Hi to Dude. Hi to Aaron. Lovely. Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do if they come back next week in the UK? Of course, this programme, of course, is, is not really a UK radio programme because the listeners are divided up all over the world. So wh wherever you are, what are you going to do if and when they announce? Look, you've got to stay in now for the next few weeks or... If Sky News correspondent Mark White has gotten it right and it could be months, what are you going to do? Because you can't live like that. You can't go on like that. I'm meeting dog walkers. They look harried. They look worried. I'll give Mark a shout. 
because he listens. Mark is a lovely man, middle-aged man from Salford. He's got a beautiful big bulldog, uh, a be- excuse me, a beautiful big boxer called Spike. And he's lovely as Mark. Lovely fella. He doesn't know anything about the Richie Allen radio show. Why would he? I've never said that I, I work in, in the media. We chat about it. And he's very worried. He hasn't seen his grandchildren in three weeks. And it's killing him because he lives on his own, you see. Lives on his own. And a big part of his life is his lovely son, whom I've met, dropping around the grandchildren for him to mind. And he was almost in tears today. Today it was. What am I going to do, Richie? And I said, well, I don't know, I can't. What can I say, really? You know, but you should be able to see your grandchildren. That's how, how, how it is now. 29 minutes past the hour. It's madness. It's madness. And there doesn't seem to be, at least, we, we've lamented, you and me, the fact that people have acquiesced. This is, we, we've lamented this. We've gotten upset about it. That people grabbed it, grabbed hold of it and ran with it. Oh, you want us to stay indoors, do you? You want us to start virtue signalling on Twitter, do you? You want us to join in the chorus demanding that everybody else stays home, do you? Okay, then we'll do it. This is very worrying for us, for you and for me. But what happens if it goes on for a few weeks? Do you think people will just say enough's enough and just start going out? But if they do, where can they go? Their employers are not likely to reopen their companies or their offices or their factories unless they're given the green light by the government. The pubs and the coffee shops and the restaurants and the bistros, they're not going to open unless the government tells them they can. So even if people get fed up to the back teeth, what are they going to do? Take to the beaches? Take to the parks? I mean, they're going to the parks anyway. Scary times, these, and we don't do fear porn here. You know, I think it's going to get worse. I really do believe in my heart of hearts that this is only the beginning. 